Hey! Hi. Thanks for waiting for me. I'm Josh. Uh, that was a lot of really practical, exciting, useful stuff. So I'd like to talk about some stuff that's a lot less practical, a lot less useful, and probably a lot less exciting. Uh, you can see all this stuff on my site. Uh, there's a blog link on there that has the full form of this. So if you want to jump ahead or jump behind in the presentation, that's kosher too. Uh, to reiterate, I'm Josh. Uh, I'm from upstate New York. I lived in Seattle for a while where I became a cat dad. I am now in Brooklyn where I am still a cat dad. I maintain a few libraries that you may use, hopefully will eventually stop using. Uh, and I want to talk to you about language. Language describes how reality should be. It tells us, computer, this is what we want you to do. Does this clicker work? Nope. Cool. So TypeScript is two languages, really. It's JavaScript, the entire JavaScript language in and of itself, which allows you to create and manipulate objects. It tells the browser, Dino, Node, whatever, these are objects. I'd like to manipulate them. And then it also has this awesome type system in it, this type language that declares, I have these expectations for my object shapes. These are how they're going to look, and these are how they're going to behave. As an example, you might declare a movie type, which says all movie objects have a name of type string and a rating of type number. Later on, you might make a variable called example, which is really two language constructs here. In the JavaScript side, we create this example variable. And then the TypeScript side, we declare it's going to be type movie. Both of them are coming together to say there's a variable of type movie, and these are the things on it. TypeScript's happy because you've successfully set up your fields. Good for you. <laughs> nice job, TSConf. Woo! <laughs> Later on, you might also use a different thing called a union type. A union type is an either type. It says, I could be this thing, or I could be that other thing, potentially other things. Anything of type raw ID we are declaring here must be of type number or string. You might declare variable ID. And the ID can be 1, 2, 3. That's a number. That's fine. It could be ABC. That's a string. But if you declare a Boolean type or a Boolean value on it, that's not allowed. And although this is perfectly valid JavaScript, it's, it's not allowed in the type system. The type checker has declared that your JavaScript doesn't match up with your TypeScript types. That's not good. Now, why am I reiterating this? Why do you people who are all obviously genius TypeScript experts care about what I'm talking about right now? We're going to go into some advanced, really weird topics in the type system. And this type of knowledge will help you write better TypeScript, and it'll help you write more TypeScript. And I want us to, to kind of come together to a shared understanding, a shared language about the language, so we can get really advanced with it and really nitty gritty. Are you excited about that? <laughs> yes. So good. All right, here's what we're actually going to do today. We're going to declare a bunch of types in order to create binary arithmetic in the type system. Within the type system, that involves three things. We're going to create types representing computer bits, one or zero. More on that later. We're going to create types that do some operations on those bits. And then we're going to get to some fancy operations on those bits towards the end. Cool. Let's get started. Type bit equals zero or one. The original title for this talk, until we learn that formatting is really hard with that, we're here we're declaring that variables of type bit can be either the number 0 or the number 1. Let my bit bit, similar to before, can be a 0 or a 1. The type number is not assignable to bit, because a number could be 2, it could be 0 0.5, negative 3, infinity, that's not allowed. So my bit is only ever 0 or 1. We can actually get more specific than this. We can say type bit 0 equals 0, or type bit 1 equals 1, which, if we look on the right, is kind of the equivalent in the type system of the JavaScript that says const bit 0 equals 0, or const bit 1 equals 1. From here on out, you're going to get a bunch of slides that have some sort of type system garbage on the left, and then the equivalent JavaScript garbage on the right. The real takeaway is the left garbage, but I think it's really useful to see this, this logic system can be represented roughly in vanilla JavaScript. Boop. Getting more advanced, type bit flip, T. The bit flip type is a generic type, also sometimes called a templated type. It takes in an original type, and then it spits out some new type based off of that. In this one, it's a conditional type. We're saying if the original type extends 0, then the new type is 1, otherwise 0. In this case, extends means, is this sort of described by? And because there's literally only one thing that can be described by 0, the literal 0, it's 
kind of like a pseudo equality operator, which means if you were to have this bit one type that's equal to bit flip of zero, we're trying to figure out what is the resultant type, fill in the code, type bit one equals, well, does zero extend zero? If so, one, otherwise zero. Boop, type bit one equals one. That's, that's, that's exciting. That's bit flipping in the type system. That, that works. All right. Now, if we want to look at the phrasing for this, this is kind of like a JavaScript function. Uh, it takes in a t, and if the t is zero, then we return one. Otherwise, we return zero. So we not just have bit flipping in the type system, we have functions. Hooray, bit flipping. <laughs> Woo. Moving on. This is TypeScript. And I'm showing you vanilla JavaScript on the right, and you're all thinking, well, Josh, this is a TypeScript conference. Surely we should have type safety here. How do we restrict the input types of our types? How do we say this t has to be a zero or a one? It has to be a bit. Because if someone gives us a nope, the, a string, the result would be zero. So in that case, we have this special extends operator in the generic type itself. t extends bit. Or in JavaScript, TypeScript equivalent, it's t colon bit. Types allow extends with generics to limit what you're allowed to give them. It's kind of like declaring a type on a function parameter. And in this case, we get errors with it. Hooray. Moving on, it was mentioned before, thank you, tuple types. A tuple is kind of like an array, but it's more specific. It's a specific length and a specific set of types in it. In this type, in this bit and type, we take in two parameters. We take in an A that's a bit, and we take in a B that's a bit. And if the tuple containing A comma B is one, one, then we know the result is one. Otherwise, it's zero. If you're not familiar with binary, this is how bit and works. And takes two things and results in one if they're both one, and zero if there is something that's not a one in there. Represented in vanilla TypeScript, ha, huh, we have it's either one if A is one and B and one, or it's zero. Tuple types. So I want you to actually fill in with me. So I'm going to ask you what Apple is, and then hopefully you'll tell me. I'd really appreciate that. So what, what is Apple? Oh my god, thank you. That one's so much better than I thought it would. <laughs> oh, you have no idea. Banana? Zero. Zero. Yeah. Cherry? Zero. Dragon fruit? <laughs> Nailed it. Yeah. All right, cool. So how do we add two bits together? That was an and operation. We want to get to addition. What, how does this actually work? So this is real binary stuff. If you have two input bits, we have two things to store the result. We have the sum and the carry. If both are zero, if you have nothing added to nothing, the sum is zero, hooray. If one is zero and the other is one, the sum is one. If they're both one, which you intuitively think is one plus one equals two, that's not true in binary because you can't store a two, which means we have zero for the sum and one for the carry. That's the next bit, which means we want to be able to represent some type system way of declaring this bit add operator. So what's entowoc? Oh my, so much less enthusiasm for this. <laughs> Farkleberry, these are real by the way. Thanks, someone out there was real excited about that. Guava, and Hackberry, my favorite one. Zero one, oh no, there's a typo, it should be one one, I'm sorry. I didn't review these at all. <laughs> all right, kill me. So uh, bit add, this is our bit add in the TypeScript type system. If A and B are both zero, then the result is sum zero carry zero. If A and B are either one zero or zero one, then the result is one zero. Otherwise, the result is zero one, which you can represent in if else, if else statements in JavaScript. Cool beans. Now we get to integers, full on int dates. Real good stuff. There's no like shortcut in the type system to say array of size eight. What are you guys doing? Come on. <laughs> there go my GitHub pull requests. I'll, I'll file that issue right after this. <laughs> Woo. All right, so yeah, and int, what does int eight actually mean? It's an eight bit integer, but what does eight bit actually mean? It literally means that there are eight bits that make this integer. Zero is eight zeros. One is the first, the least significant, the least valuable bit is one. It's two to the zero, which is one. Then if you want to get two, it's the next bit. Two to the one is two. Then if you have three, it's two to the zero plus two to the one, which is three. And then if you have four, it, this, this is going on and on. There is an easier way to start typing these out. Not the fixed length array, 
but I want to introduce now mapped types, where I don't want to have to write all eight bits for my numbers. If I already have a zero and I just want to change one bit in there, I want to have a way to just change that one bit. Well, a mapped type takes in an original type, takes in all the members of that original type, all the properties of it, and then spits out a new type with mapped properties, changed ones. In this case, we're saying every index in the original int becomes a value zero, which in JavaScript TypeScript land is the dot map function. Map, that's, the, that's where that term comes from. You're mapping from one thing to another. So what's, I don't know how to pronounce this, imbe, imbe? Someone said whatever I want. It is whatever I want. It's, it's an array of size one that has exactly one zero in it. And what is zero of, in this case, zero out of int eight? Ah, oh, yes, we're back. Thank you. It's, it's eight zeros. Cool. So that, that, that works. Now we can start representing even more fancy mapped types, where I want to I wanna replace some original bits. In this case, what I'm saying is, for every index in the original bits array, if there is a replacement defined for that, I will use the replacement at that index in the new thing. Otherwise, I use the original. The JavaScript side, the TypeScript side on the right is not very efficient, but that's OK because it's the type system and they've already optimized for this, right? <laughs> so what is one? Yeah, it's one, zero, 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 zero. Two is the same. That one was, that one was a freebie. That feels good. We, th look how advanced this is. Look at, look at this crap. This is ridiculous. Who's, who does this? <laughs> All right, so now we're getting to kind of the, the final stages. We have addition with bits. Um, how, do you, how do you represent fancy addition with 8-bit integers? Um, you might remember from elementary school when you first had to learn addition, those good old days. If you start with two numbers, you can set them up in columns with each other. Uh, in this first column, 0 plus 1 is one, so the resultant one bit or zeroth bit is one. Now in this next one, we have one and one added together, which you remember from the earlier slides is some zero carry one, oh, love it. And then if you have three ones added together, well, it turns out that's one in the result and then another one carried. So this is six plus seven equals 13, or one one zero plus one one one, 1101. This is how you do that. And this is how you do adding three bits together. Uh, it's very similar to what you saw before. I'm aware the back probably can't see the bottom TypeScript, sorry. But uh, if the original is just a bunch of zeros, it's zero, zero, and so on and so forth. Here we're coming to the uh, more ridiculous understanding of the type system is capable of all these fancy advanced operators, but it's really just equality comparisons or extends comparisons. I just love looking at all these zeros and ones on the screen. Cool. All right. Just as a helper, I'll use this more meaningfully later. Um, we're going to combine the, the concepts now. If we have these two original input eights and we want to get the bit adds of each column in them, what we can do is we map over each of the indices, 0 through 7, and we get the bit add result of it. So this bit add function, or bit add generic type, takes in two, let's say, int eights and maps them. For each index, we retrieve a bit add of those things at that column. This gets helpful soon. We're almost there. So how do we set up the bit adds of all columns in our input binary? Uh, we might have to carry a bit from the last part of it to the, the end of it, from the first to the last. Uh, if it's just 11111 plus 11111, then we're going to have to carry a whole bunch of stuff. So we're going to have to add variables to the type system. <laughs> Isn't that great? I couldn't find a good like in-line example of here. But you can do two things. You can say that your parameter, your, your type parameter, extends something else, and you can provide it uh, an equals. You can say it defaults to something. So it both defaults to something and must extend that thing, which is kind of like declaring a variable. So in this example, the, the C type parameter is just bit and of A and B. Uh, there, I did file an issue to, to have a shorthand for this. I think it's awaiting more feedback or some such. So if y'all could, <laughs> heart reaction. Yeah. All right, we're, we're like basically almost there, as I have been saying for most of the presentation. All right, so this is, this is the JavaScript way to add two int eights together as we have represented them thus far. 
you take in two int dates, you get the bit adds using that mapped type that was the helper from before. Uh, you get the, the first result because there's no possible carry from a previous column, which is just added of zero. Um, and then for each of them, you get the bit add three of the columns add there, and then any carry from the previous thing. So it's just a whole bunch of copy pasta here. And then at the very end, you return this huge array of eight integers at zero of zero, at one of zero, at two of zero. And you close your function because you're a good programmer. <laughs> so this is, let's just soak this in. This is how we JavaScript add, or I guess TypeScript it as type declarations. Two int dates. We're ready. Do you feel ready? <laughs> yeah. All right, we take in the two inputs. Thank you for that. We take in the two inputs, and then we declare our first variable in our function. Uh, bit adds of a and b, that's useful. Then we get the at zero, extends added zero equals added zero. So that's const at zero. And then we keep going for the rest of them. <laughs> so much copy pasta. And then we return the thing at the end. That's our result. Wow. Cool. Yeah. Wow, indeed. Why would you use this? I, I don't know. But here, here's the full thing. In fact, I wanted to get a reaction shot of this because I think it's funny. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to take a quick selfie with it all here. Thanks. That'll go on Twitter in five minutes. Cool. So what, what would you actually want to use with this information? You could go further. You could bit subtract. You could int 8 multiply. There's probably a division possibility in there, depending on how you want to deal with rounding and floating point numbers. You could probably represent floating point numbers. The TypeScript team is going, uh-uh. Uh, I swear I wrote this out prior to earlier in the presentations, but you could contribute to definitely typed. This, you're all masters in the type system now. You could totally use this knowledge for good. Uh, if you use a library and somehow it's still not undefinitely typed and not in TypeScript itself, you could contribute that library. Uh, now that you know everything about the type system, you could totally write anything you want there. You could submit pull requests to improve existing definitions. See, this talk was useful after all. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I have more time, so I had a few extra things to show you, uh, stuff that didn't quite fit in with the other things. But who here likes TDD, test-driven development? writing tests before your code to make sure you write tests because you're not going to do it after the code. <laughs> Thanks to everyone who wrote their hand, or rose their hand. Um, you can have tests in the type system. Uh, in this case, actual extends expected and equals expected. So if, if you have things that extend each other, that's great. This is OK. The cert's extended. And then if you don't do the right thing, the type system will throw an error at you. So I, I actually implemented like the first rough stages of this int8 stupidity with TDD, which felt really, really good. <laughs> uh, you could have bit and. So what's entowalk this time? Zero? I think it's zero. Yeah. And then if you wanted to, to say, use the, your tests in your type system as you're developing things, I think that works out pretty well. Cool. And then what's bit XOR? I'm just testing your knowledge on binary arithmetic now to stall for time. <laughs> cool. What's guava? One. Cool. One. And that's all I have. <laughs> We're ending early so you can go to lunch. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks.